did we meet, Xander? How long have we known each other? Monty and I have known each other since um, the last century, and uh, which would be last ten years, at least ten years, and. Uh, at that time, uh, I was living in Los Angeles. I was a music director for a club called Makeup. We had a lot of excellent musicians, rock stars that came to be part of this show. And one day, some of the Madonna guys brought this guy, Monty Pittman, down to join us. And we became fast friends. Yeah, I played on his album, his band, Run Run Run. I played uh, some bass, a little bit of guitar maybe. And yeah, I think I recorded some guitar, but he erased my tracks <laughs> after I left. But then I re-recorded them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I'm a big fan of Monty's, and uh, Monty's an all-around great guy. Not only is he uh, an amazing musician, uh, I'm not just kissing his ass here, but okay. he's also he's also one of the most giving and nicest guys uh, in the music scene. I got to say that. Thank you. And I played with. As, as a music director, I played with a lot of people, and uh, he always shows up. He's always uh, really creative and enthused, and so when finally Monty got a chance to do his own music, I was honored to be asked to be. I guess Monty and I first met uh, through Adam Lambert. I started working with the Lambert camp probably maybe three or four or five weeks before the American Music Awards performance, so that's where I met Monty, um, shredding on guitar for Mr. Lambert. Uh, we've been all over the world since then, um, and then once the Lambert tour ended, I was uh, you know, <coughs> graced with the uh, the honor of being able to join Monty's band and uh, help uh, not only promote these new songs that he's been hard at work uh, producing and writing, but also we get to track one hell of a record coming up pretty soon, which we're all pretty stoked about. Um, as far as playing with Monty, I, th this is the first time that I've had fun playing music in a long time. I do a lot of work as a playback engineer, audio engineer, I've been playing drums my whole life. Up until when I, I moved to California in about 2007. It's all about Monty. Flo, 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 float around doing my own thing for a while, but it just wasn't fun. This is the first time that I've actually had fun playing music in a long time. And it's all thanks to Monty. <laughs> almost two years ago uh, we met at the Adam auditions and uh, first thing said to me was my tattoos the Jason Voorhees tattoo we became friends after that exchanged numbers and then just became friends really quick and we just loved playing with each other we we're all into the same music and everything and then uh, after that the tour had ended I you know I didn't want to really want to play with anyone else because I have a lot of respect for him he's a great guitar player and uh, just you know, I'm excited he's getting to make this album, and I just want to help him in any way I can to get it done. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I don't have too much more. Xander doing a club makeup show and club makeup I mean looking back now that's one of the coolest things that kind of went on in LA in the last 10 years they should have done a, like a documentary on it or something like that it started out it was club bang and then it club, club bang kind of turned into club makeup see I, I remember I went to club I remember going to club bang we yeah may have, I think we may have actually met then 
But it's kind of one of those things, if you remember it, you weren't there. <laughs> yeah. It was sort of the, honestly, it was sort of the Studio 54 it, well, it, of, of this decade. It was probably as close to that as you could get. We saw amazing things. I mean, we played, we, Monty and I kind of were there to see Alice and Chains get back together again. Weren't we? Think that was it. the. But that was our. Th we got Jerry up on stage, and that's right. He borrowed my guitar. He <coughs> borrowed my Red Les Paul. Jerry Cantrell borrowed your guitar. Yeah. Like and 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 I had the nerve to try and teach him how to play Highway to Hell, which is hilarious because he's just looking at me like. I'm like, no. It's he's like, I'm Jerry Cantrell. Like, I yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> and then I can rewrite it. Even we got, if I play it wrong, I'm playing. We it. also. <laughs> no, we also got the Cult. Remember they they showed up. And they Such played, phenomenal they singers. <laughs> I mean, the best singers, you know, around were all doing this. Uh, there's a guy, Alan Lewis, he's on Broadway now. And Alan Lewis is who introduced me to Adam Lambert because I said, who's the best singer that you know? I said, all, I think all you guys are the best singers I've ever heard. And uh, who, who's the best singer that you know to start a band with? And, and he was telling me about Adam. And that's how me and Adam met. Um, Scarlet Cherry was one of the singers. Um, you know, she's been... Her name wasn't Scarlet Cherry then, but just Scarlet. Um, I, st I don't even know what her last name was. Doesn't matter anymore. Um, this guy, Jack Atlantis, he looks like John Taylor from Duran Duran and sings just like David Bowie. Um, don't forget Alexis Arquette. Alexis Arquette. All the, all the Arquettes would show up yep. on a regular basis. Um, Alexis is who else was there? Picture. Yeah, uh, so many. I mean, it, it's kind of a, it is kind of a haze, kind of a blur. Yeah. But, uh, and then uh, from from club makeup. Club makeup happened every week, every or no, no. Once a first, month. like the first weekend, once a month, and there'd be a different theme. And then that's kind of, and then from there, like the, a lot of a lot of people who did club makeup kind of started the Zodiac show. And then now there's another thing that's called Transcontinental that's happening now. And so, which is kind of more people from club makeup. This the whole circle of people keeps. Uh, which is funny. Uh, you didn't know this, but um, Trans K is playing tomorrow night for the restart of Club Bang. That's what that is tomorrow night. Full There's, circle. They're bringing Bang back. So, so that's how I met Xander, and then I play. You know, I, um, for a while there, I mean, I was kind of like playing in his band, and then I was going on tour with Prong at the same time, so the, you know, I've, all, I'm all, I've always got all these things going on, always juggling all these things. And uh, played bass in Xander's band. And uh, That was fun. So that Warren fun. and I uh, <laughs> became really good friends because we worked a lot on, uh, you know, while he was doing all the multi-tracks for Adam's show, you know, or like doing the playback, which runs the video, the uh, you know, the lighting, I mean, he, this is like Oz behind the curtain running the whole show. Um, he, he's saved our ass many times when, um, you know, because, you know, with it being a computer, sometimes the computer crashes. Uh, my computer crashes all the time, so, um, you know, if you ever want it to do something. And he, since Warren is musical, the computer would crash, everything would drop out, we'd keep playing, he would fix it and know and start it again and he'd come back in and know, and the audience would never know that anything had gone wrong. Um, and then of course me and Tommy started playing together from when he joined Adam's band. Uh, I guess when we, you know, it was just like the beginning of everything, we both joined Adam's band at the same time. And he and I are the only ones who are still there, that were there, you know, from, from day one. And, um, he, so he came down to audition, and uh, the, the chemistry with me, him, and Longinu was just something that uh, doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't happen every day. It's something you don't see very often. And uh, yeah, we, we started talking about he's got uh, all these cool tattoos, and that's how we started talking. We we like a lot of the same music. Uh, me, him, and Longinu would get together and just kind of jam just before we were going to kind of get together and start jamming with Adam and playing like Pantera songs and Metallica songs just to kind of tighten up and, and, and kind of get used to playing with each other. So when it came time to play on my own and, and doing, I've always kind of wanted to do some sort of project on my own or start a band. And every time I do that, either, you know, the singer goes off and becomes super famous and it kind of dis disbands the band, or uh, 
you know, with everybody's schedules, people go on tour with different people, or you know, living in LA, you can't just be sitting around. You got to be doing something or playing with somebody. And um, so it started out. I started playing uh, just acoustic, solo acoustic shows, and then I was going to start playing with a band. And it, well, before that, Tommy would play with me sometimes. Um, you know, out doing like uh, open mic nights or whatever. And I started at first. I was when I started really taking this project seriously. I started doing open mic nights just to go practice and play in front of people, and just to be in an environment that you can't control. And if you could make that work, you could make anything work. So uh, Tommy started playing with me, and then uh, yeah, when uh, at the beginning of the year I was going to play out, and Warren was like, "Hey, hit me up," you know, if you. If you need a drummer, and I was like, "Yeah, sure," you know, and so we just—it was everything just kind of fell into place. I've kind of been looking back, like, how did how did we all come together? It just all just kind of happened. But everything's been going on in everybody's lives so fast. It's been such a whirlwind that it just we just we all like playing, and we all are really good friends, and we all we all play really well with each other, and there's no drama, and there's no. I can't uh, believe it's almost been egos. two years. That's weird. It's been a long time. Two years almost. Yeah. Drama and egos are the number one thing that's going to tear up a band. So I feel like I got a job to do. There's, I want to get people playing music again and excited about playing music and not everybody. It seems like everything is just conforming to all these. You know, it's like it's like eventually it's just going to be one big company that controls everything, and I want to at least fight a good fight against that. I don't know. If I win or not, but or at least, or at least get people going. This kick, I, I launched a Kickstarter campaign a few, a couple of months ago, and it made what's going to be the next album is the number one album in their Hall of Fame is the uh, receiving the most funds, and it hasn't even been made yet. And so that's you know, there's a lot of people excited about this, which is exciting. It's it's a lot of work getting together and doing an album and um, we were going to start next week and now it's been pushed back two or three weeks hopefully it doesn't get pushed back anymore that's just what it's like making an album you never know I mean yeah we're not we like it to keep going as long as it'd be great I mean it would be wonderful if this became successful and people could keep doing this but you never know who you know who's gonna get have to go somewhere else you know Eventually, me and Tommy will be playing with Adam. Eventually, I'll have Madonna work again. Warren, who knows who, you know, he, he has people calling him all the time to go out. Xander tour manages also, and he, he plays with his band all over the place. So, if ev hopefully everybody's schedules will still let us play together. And if not, then when we're done with whatever we're doing, then we'll come back and play again. Actually, when we were in Dallas, Playing with, when me and Tommy and Warren were in, in Dallas playing with Adam, Xander was in the same complex, the same venue, the club in, inside the venue playing the show. It's it's weird how everybody's what was really it's cross. What was amazing about that show in particular, something I've never seen before, was um, the fans. I wish I could say they were our fans, but the fans for the Russian band we were playing with <laughs> are so enthusiastic about this band. This is like this is. The, probably the biggest rock band from Russia and the, the fact that they were playing in America you know Russian transplants couldn't believe it and Dallas is a big city full of Russians so they I mean they if you were Russian or even knew about Russia you were going to this show and then you know Adam Lambert fans I mean they're out there with the lawn chairs they're ready to go too so the line started forming in two different directions and our bus was here and the Adam Lambert's bus was here and people were confused because you've got these Russian fans, you've got these Adam Lambert fans, like sort of in the same line, staring at each other, and they're trying to talk to each other. It was pretty funny. Uh